Now, Thomas McKinte talks about a genealogy do-over and even a DNA do-over. Well, today, I'm going to do a My Heritage Review do-over. Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics, and this is a segment of DNA. Now, last November, I recorded an episode about my heritage where I went through some pros and cons. And I released that, and I had that scheduled back then to be released the second or third week of January. Well, a week before the video was scheduled to be released, my heritage made an upgrade to their algorithm, an upgrade to their database, and immediately eliminated all of the negatives that I said in that video about their service. Last month at Roots Tech, I talked with Rand Sneer about these issues and what my heritage had done, as well as what they were looking forward to doing in the future. I promised him I would go through the My Heritage DNA service again, and I would come up with another video for that. And that is what we are doing today. So we're gonna start off with five things I like about my heritage DNA. Now you notice most of my review videos only have three things that I like and three that I don't like. There was so many new things with this that I decided to upgrade my heritage review to show you five things that I really like. Number one, auto triangulation. This was awesome. When you are looking at multiple matches, my heritage tells you that you have triangulated segments on these matches. Now for people who are just starting out or people who are trying to even wrap their minds around what triangulation is, this is perfect because it takes a lot of the guesswork out of triangulation. The computer is automatically able to see it. When you are matching with multiple people, it tells you, hey, these groups of people are triangulated in this segment. I love that. Now, number two, this is a repeat from last time and that's multiple kit management. I really like to be able to manage all of my kits under one account, particularly when they have to do with all of my different family members and most of them aren't interested in doing either genealogy or specifically genetic genealogy. That makes it really easy that I can not only compare between my family members with other people, but I can also have them linked where I want on the family tree that I build on my heritage. Number three, the link to the tree system. And this is something from a genetic genealogy that is really important because it turns your DNA into a record, into a source, into something that you can attach to a person on a tree that other people can then be able to link to or be able to see, hey, I match this person here, how are we related? Now you can do this on some other sites that aren't specifically genealogy sites However, when you're actually combining the ability to attach other sources with the DNA source, you get a complete picture of that person and how you may be related to them and what records also support them. And that's one thing that I really like about my heritage. Number four, and I just noticed this actually when you, in your DNA results and you scroll down to the bottom of the screen, they have surveys that you can take. This is one of the things when I first did 23andMe that I said I really like about that is the ability to be involved in other people's research. And I believe that is what MyHeritage is doing here. They're taking that DNA database and by surveying you, by asking you questions about your history, about you know, the traits you have or your family, different things like that, they can make a database that's more valuable as far as the information that it contains. It's not just DNA, but it's also what some of that DNA may code for that researchers are going to find really valuable. So I like that my heritage is looking out and forward as far as what else can we do with this information and how can we help other people with that. Number five, and this might seem odd, but just the ability to sort matches in so many different ways. They have not just a sorting method, but they also have a filter method. And so just in your list of matches, you can do different things with that list to help narrow it down, to make it as broad, or to focus on certain aspects of it, to help find which matches you wanna focus on when you're trying to contact people or when you're doing research on particular family lines. So I like 
that they have that and it's really easy right at the top. You have the filter on one side and you have the sorting button on the other side. So those are five positives that I really like about MyHeritage and most of them are actually new with this upgrade that MyHeritage has done. So if you have not been on your MyHeritage site with your results, go on there, check them out. So now we get to the negatives, to the cons. And I will say this, last time they made their upgrade a week before I posted the video and negated everything, I tried to find some things that I didn't think they were going to be able to fix in a short time. And they might be obscure, they, they might take some different programming, but the other thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna actually try to get this video released within a week or two of when I'm recording it so that I can get the jump on them this time. And you know what, I fully expect that they're gonna come back and they're gonna fix some of these things and I'm probably gonna to have to do a do-over, do-over video. But let's get into the cons. Number one is the mailing. What I mean by that is when I opened up the My Heritage Kit, there was an envelope that you put the sample in, but the envelope didn't have any postage on it and that is different from all the other DNA tests that I've taken. Why this is important to have a prepaid postage envelope is because more and more people are buying these kits not for themselves, but for other relatives. And in a lot of cases, they're mailing them out to other relatives. And so they wanna make sure they get those results back. Well, if they're putting any kind of a hassle on the relatives of, oh, well, now I have to go to the post office to pay postage, or I got to figure out how much postage goes on it, then it's more likely that they're not going to get into the mail, or they're not going to be as likely to do it in a timely fashion. So let's get this one fixed. It's an easy win for you. Put in a postage paid envelope with your DNA kit. Number two. I don't have full triangulation with my segment matches. Now, what do I mean by that? Because I just said in the positive that you have auto triangulation and I love that. What I mean is, is you can download your segment matches, all the different segments of DNA that you match with those people. Now, in order to do triangulation, you need to know how those matches match your matches as well. So let me show you here. When you download and you have these two people, you have a line that says, hey, I match person B. And it says another line that says, I match person C. And that's it. What you don't have is you don't have a line anywhere that says person B matches person C. Now the auto triangulation, like I said, was great. And it is good for going through people one at a time to find out how your different triangul triangulation segments are. But what I use the downloaded information for is to create a triangulation table of dozens of different people that I match with. This is probably a programming issue that MyHeritage could fix, but recognize that when you do this, the size of your file of segment matches is probably 10 times the size of what it would be when you're just looking at your own matches and those segments that you match with them. Number three is your DNA preferences. So when you sign up for a kit, you put different preferences that you have as far as whether you wanna share and how much information that. Later on, you may decide to change what that is, or if you're managing kits for other people, they may decide that it wants to be changed, and so you have to go and change that. Now, your DNA preferences are in the settings, and there's a couple of different levels you have to go through to get to them, so that I was able to find them. Since DNA is an issue that a lot of people have privacy about, I would like to see on the DNA page some place where there is a link that you can go right to the DNA preferences and get those changed for the different kits that you manage. Number four, phasing. Whenever you have a parent along with a child's kit, you should be able to see how those matches of that child go to either the paternal line or the maternal line. Now, my heritage allows you to do that if you're comparing two people. So if you compare me and my mom, then I can see all of our matches, which would be in my maternal match. What some other sites do is they just have a little M and a P on that match that lets you know this is a maternal match or this is a paternal match based on you and the parent or both parents that you have in the system. So I would suggest on your matches right by the name, you could put in parentheses an M or a P. Number five. And this is more of a graphic design type of thing. When you're looking at your match list, each match just takes up way too much space on the screen. So if you're taking a look at this, 
I can only see really one or two matches at a time as I'm scrolling down. I can never see a lot of them. What would be nice is if there was a way that you could have minimal amount of information or you could have a more compact view. Now, what would that look like? Well, take a look right here. If we move this, informa if we move this information up to here and we shrink down this box, then we're only taking up half the space or less per match and still showing all the same information. Now, like I said, some people may like having that big space of all that information. I'd like to have the option of being able to make it more compact. So there you have it. I have my five pros and my five cons with MyHeritage DNA. And just a reminder, MyHeritage has improved a lot of things greatly. I expect them to actually take a lot of this feedback and probably even implement some of these things as well. They may be in the works and they may have already corrected some of them before you're even viewing this video. You have any comments about MyHeritage, what you like or what you don't like about MyHeritage, put it in the comments below and we can have a discussion about it. Don't forget to subscribe so that you won't miss another episode of Family History Fanatics.